Producer's voice. Today we are making anion exchange membranes. Now we need glutamic acid to make those membranes, but we're only sold monosodium glutamate. So we have some citric acid. Now the reason why we're using citric acid is because if we use a stronger acid, we might form the more soluble salt of it. Like if you use hydrochloric, we'll get the hydrochloride salt, which is soluble and we don't want that. So we have here our, our sodium glutamate and I found out the calculation earlier by looking at the molar mass ratio that you, bas you basically need a 1 is to 1 ratio. Well, it's more like 1 is to 1.12 but 1 is to 1 is 1 is to 1 who gives a crap. Excess of citric acid if you want to save on glutamate. Depends on which one's cheaper. Well, in my case, this is actually cheaper. So I'm gonna make about 20 grams. I'm gonna put about 20 grams. 21. Fuck it, same thing. No, no, it's not. Don't. Okay. So that's uh, 21 grams of sodium glutamate, monosodium glutamate, and we have here citric acid, and we'll just put about the same amount. We set this. Yes. Come on. Right. So we basically have a 1 is to 1 ratio. The next step we gotta do is we then need to uh, put in some, put this into some warm water over here. I was gonna put it in here but I realized there might not be enough. So we're just gonna try our best and just dunk these two in here as quick as possible because this reaction is very quick. I have some more water on the side because I knew this would happen. Basically. The moment you do this, and you've, once you've actually got them to mix, you will start seeing some immediate clouding occur. This is actually the formation of glutamic acid. However, this reaction is very slow. You have to try your best to dissolve all the citric acid before this happens. Which is, you know, it's better to make two solutions, but I have done it this way and it also works. So you just gotta shake it like, like you just okay, you get the rhythm going on. And as you can see, it's literally starting to cloud already. But all our citric acid we, is not dissolved. We still have some at the bottom. Now it's fully dissolved. You can see it's becoming cloudy. Let me put on the back, the black background in order for you to see it better. Yes, that's clearly cloudy. And there's one last thing you need to do. You get some hydrochloric acid. Because even though I mentioned before that you don't want to make the soluble hydrochloride so if we add a bit of hydrochloric acid, we actually increase the efficiency of this uh, prep. Because it, it, it will make this a lot faster. But you only need to add a very small amount, like literally a few drops, just so that, you know. Because if you were to add like less of an excess of, uh, just need about this much and it's good. That's it. Right. So I'm going to time lapse this. I don't know what you want. Let's have a bit of fun till I down fall. My love. You know, people, when we got to the point, you have that on you. But then you do, you have like experiments, you have more fun. Can you do that? Okay, so as you can see, we have a lot of glutamic acid at the bottom. Now we're just gonna filter it. And unlike that one guy, I'm not gonna be tasting this. For obvious reasons. One, I've used this container for other things. And two, kind of seems a little cursed. I'm probably gonna, like, I already know the taste because of that guy. He said it's sour. You know? And by that guy, I mean that chemist. You know, to say that. Say that, that, that. Yep. Anyway. You have to filter it now to separate it from whatever else is over here. I'm just scoring the bottom because as these things precipitate, they tend to stick, you know? The best thing to do is just to swirl it like a madman before filtering it. It actually slow down the filtration, but it's, it's just that 
and a lot of this stuff sticking at the bottom of the container that pisses me off. I mean, that would piss you off to put it. You look at all this. That stuff stuck to it. Ah, uh, whatever. Only need like, what, three grams for my uh, thing. So that's all we really need. So we just leave this to filter. And, you know, you can watch the footage as it filters and probably speed it up. Just zoom in a little bit. Yes. Just uh, move this a little so you can watch it filter. Okay, so we need to wash these crystals with some anhydrous ethanol because that will enable us to basically dry them faster because glutamic acid is not soluble in ethanol. Adding this and it also will soak into the paper and unlike water you can see ethanol drains a lot faster. All you want to do is you just want to soak everything. Just so that when it dries, it dries very easily. Now when you add anhydrous ethanol to this, you know, if you put this in the freezer, then you will not notice any real crashing out of the crystals at the bottom. However, if you didn't, well then you will notice some crashing out. So, you might have to filter a second time to recover a second product if you so desire. However, it doesn't really matter. For me anyway, I'm just gonna need what's on top of here. And I've already got the uh, substrate for my ion exchange membrane. It's PVC, but I'm not dechlorinating it because it's only a very light coat of PVC. If I dechlorinate it, it will be a lot better anyway. So the next step, we're going to be putting this PVC substrate cloth. We're gonna paint this, we're gonna mix this with some PVA and we're gonna paint it. And once we've painted it, we can then cook it in the oven. And after baking it in the oven, we will get our anion membrane. Now the thing is, it's not a very strong anion membrane because it's not in the quaternary form, which is gonna be an amine. Though it can hold charges, you know, it's not gonna be that great. However, it's good enough for my purpose. You know, it would be a lot better if I had some methyl iodide, but you know, I'm gonna have to talk to some people in order to get that, so that's gonna be another time. I know this sounds horrible, but I need to dry this thing faster. So I employed over here a little bit of uh, Part of the broken hair dryer I had, and I'm using the fan to essentially blow on the ethanol. Let's increase the voltage to about nine. Eight. Eight's good enough. Nine makes this thing shake violently. So yeah, hopefully I don't blow my product everywhere. That would suck. You know. I'm not sure if I trust this. I mean, it was a good try, but look at this thing. I, I, I can't trust this piece of equipment at all. You know, I'm just gonna leave it outside. This thing, yeah, this thing is starting to make funny noises. That's it.